All right, we are live. Space Coast Real Estate Spotlight today. I have top producer, real estate agent extraordinaire, number one agent, according to his parents at DeNovo Real Estate. <laughs> Here. My mom, my mom says I'm the best. Well, yeah, I she's not wrong. She's absolutely correct. Um, so today we're going to be talking about real estate in Brevard County along the Space Coast in 2024. And uh, we'll be right back. Peter loves that intro. All right. Love that intro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So let's get right into it. Real estate right now is, is a very different thing than we expected it to be a couple of years ago, right? 2023 was a little bit different than we expected. Coming into 24, I thought we would see rates coming down quite a bit. I thought we would see home values going through the roof. Like, what are you seeing on your side? Sure. Well, um, Last year was uh, definitely a different type of year. Um, it was what a lot of people that have been in the industry uh, pre-COVID will say was a normal year. Um, listings sat a little bit longer. Uh, you know, there was a lot more negotiating. You weren't throwing up a listing and it wasn't, you know, by that three days later, that Sunday, uh, you weren't asking for final and best and getting 24 offers. It was, <clears throat> it was you know, back to normal, which was a good thing for buyers. But um, it was also a little bit of a challenge because um, throughout most of the state, we had uh, insurance premiums uh, rise drastically. So with those big uh, premiums, sometimes as high as 50 percent increases, um, the condo um, sector, especially here in Brevard, came to I wouldn't call it a screeching halt, but by fall of 23 it was a very different type of environment for condos um as compared to um a few months earlier i i had sold a few units in one building in satellite beach and um no issues at the beginning of the year but as the year uh went on it got harder and harder and and that's all because um of uh the surfside collapse uh tragedy that happened in miami uh, all condos are now required to have what's called a milestone inspection report, which, you know, you know about, um, even doing loans for condos. Um, there's what's called a long and a short questionnaire where the long questionnaire, a lot of HOAs just refuse to even answer the questions because they don't want to get sued. Um, you're, you're one of the few lenders that can do it with a short questionnaire, get it done. And, um, I th I'm going off on a tangent, but I'm just saying how unique condos are. Yeah, um, and they were especially unique last year, and go definitely going into this year. That's just going to be uh, probably for the next few years, and unless there's some kind of change with uh, the insurance industry. Yeah, so the regulations that you're talking about on the lending side are stemmed from just like you said that that terrible event that happened down in South Florida, and the the lending around condos has gotten a lot tighter too. Not just do they have to have the structural engineering reports if it's three stories or higher and there's so many different things but the lending itself has gotten tighter so just to like you were saying there's all kinds of different inspections there's different requirements for reserves there's all sorts of different things with budgeting and insurance for the master policy and there's a lot of things going on with condos right now so fortunately uh we do have a lot of outlets to do the short uh or you call it the short form the limited review on condos so Thank God that that's an option. Um, you know, if somebody's putting enough money down, we can right. avoid some of those questions. But um, it has definitely gotten harder in Florida. It was always a little bit different lending in Florida on condos, but now because of that, it's gotten even tighter and it's a bit more stringent. So it's more difficult. Yeah. Um, condos aside, what what kind of things did you see, maybe over the last six to nine months in Space Coast real estate that? I think maybe caught you off guard. Like what, what happened that you didn't quite see coming and how did you have to adapt and overcome to keep things moving? Um, well, we expected last year um, to see uh, inventory rise, but we were expecting it to rise a little bit more than it actually did. 
Um, so that was a, a little bit of a surprise. Um, but I would also say, um, you know, as interest rates rose last year, everybody fully expected that, you know, it would come down. And um, they did come down slightly uh, towards the, what, I guess January and a little bit into February, but now they're kind of back where they were ish. Um, so that's kind of been a surprise too, which um, goes to say, you know, when it comes to buying a home, uh, if you're depending on the rate to come down, that may not be a good strategy. You know, there might, you might need to start talking to a realtor with some experience that can, you know, provide you with some alternatives with a good lending partner. Um, because we have gotten a lot of deals done the past uh, few months. Um, and, you know, there's creative ways to do it, whether it's with a rate buy down or, you know, getting some seller concessions to help pay for some of those things. Um, so the fact that the rates are still kind of a thorn in our side, um, I would say to me is a, the biggest surprise, but I don't, I'd, you know, there's still it's, it's you know it's, things are still moving I'm, i've been busy today was a busy day so you know it's just you just have to hustle a little bit more and that's that's all there is to it yeah for sure i'm glad that you said that that there's a lot of business out there to be had and those of us that are constantly working through our processes and getting out and doing things are seeing the fruit of our results but there definitely is uh, a lot of things to your point that didn't go the way that we thought they were going to go, whether it was the inventory numbers, whether it was interest rates, you can't let those things really hinder your business though, right? You're staying busy. I'm staying busy. You're selling houses. I'm still mortgaging houses. So things are still moving along. And I agree with you that those folks that are waiting for rates to get to a particular point before they get back into the game, are going to find that when rates get back to that point, everyone else that's also with the same mindset that they're going to wait are going to get back into the game. And then we're going to be right back where we were two years ago, where the sellers were asking for bids over asking as a starter, right? Yeah. My house is listed for 400000 but I want to bid at four fifty or don't even come to us. So, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean? So sure. yeah. everybody is going to be of the same mindset as you are if you wait for rates to come down. And the longer that you wait, the longer it's going to take you to start making payments on that home, which works against your amortization on that mm -hmm. and the appreciation that you're gaining. Yeah. Home values are going to go up more. Interest rates might come back down, but there's going to be this level off where whatever you're saving in rate, you're paying for in cost of home and your payments are going to be roughly the same. So there's, it's not a wise strategy to kind of sit and wait and see what happens. Just just this morning, we uh, had a meeting at DeNovo and our, our broker, Garrett Bell, uh, was throwing out some numbers. And just from January 23 to January 24, there was a 7% increase overall in the housing industry in, in Brevard. Um, now, the again, to go back to the condos, that sector did not have that big, sharp rise. Um, in fact, some of them have actually you know, leveled off or gone down in value um, because now the HOAs are so high. People mm -hmm. are saying, well, if I'm going to pay for this condo and have this huge monthly fee every month, I don't, I don't want to pay $500,000. i will pay $450,000. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, not every sector is the same. And definitely um, the overall housing uh, market is doing well and is healthy. It's just, you know, it's different. And it is a little different to navigate it now. So you have to be be uh, well versed. Exactly. Yeah, I've done a few loans just this year. So, you know, just in the past, call it 10 weeks, where somebody is getting out of a condo because of the fact that the homeowners dues have either gone up already or they're projected to go up. So that's definitely a driver for why people are trying to get out of their condos and go into townhomes or single family residences. Sure. It's not surprising to hear that the condo numbers didn't go up quite as much as the single family residences. Right. But that's not to say that it's still not a good idea to get into condos because the longer somebody waits, the more expensive it's going to be. So yeah. if you're somebody that wants to be in a condo, don't let that be a deterrent to you. Just get in now before it's even more expensive later. Yeah. Living at the beach comes with a price tag. So if, if that right there, if you've accepted that, and you still want to live at the beach, then there are some really good deals right now. Absolutely. So, you know, for sure. Absolutely.
I remember the listing that you and I went to a few times last year. A beautiful, beautiful condo with uh, an amazing view. I forgot what we called it, but I've never seen a view like that. It was, yeah. what, what did we call it? Um, shoot, something <laughs> horizontal something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just an amazing beach. Yeah. Just being be, be able to sit in your living room or in the kitchen and have breakfast yeah. or dinner or lunch and see that view. You don't have that other places. It's just awesome. Yeah. I should have trademarked that because people liked it when I would say it, whatever. It was. Yeah. I can't remember. I remember. Uh, hey, that, we have to get creative sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's so many cool things about living uh, in a condo beachside. And to your point, you do have to reconcile that there are going to be some things that just come with the territory. And if you're okay with that, then it's yeah. a fantastic option. So what do you think, not that you have a crystal ball, Peter, but what do you think over the next 30 to 60 days we can expect to see in the real estate market here in Brevard? Are we going to continue to see more of the same? Do you think we're going to see higher inventory numbers? If I tell you that rates are going to stay kind of flat over the next 30 to 60 days, what? how does that work in terms of you selling homes? I don't think that's going to hurt anything. Um, I would say that um, inventory is going to be rising. The spring market's always busy. Uh, you know, you're going to see a lot of people start talking about listing or listing their homes. Um, people that are making uh, career moves, they start thinking about maybe uh, uh, moving just so they can coordinate it all with their kids school schedules you know so they start thinking about that in april may june <clears throat> um and um the rates i can tell you as of now are not um keeping as many people on the sidelines i i through my crm i can tell when the the buyers i have are active i can see what they're looking for i can see what they're saving and searching for and there's been a big spike in the past two weeks, I would say. And um, this week, I've actually been very busy with showings. Um, right. And that's because for whatever reason, everybody and every person is a little bit different than the other. They all have their own reasons why they're coming back into the market. But they they also um, have the, the fact that they wanted to buy a home hasn't changed. It's just now they know that, you know, the rates are where they are. Um, they're probably going to come down a little bit, hopefully a lot of it, you know, but we don't know. Um, and I think at this point, it's just better to say, let's just accept the fact they are where they are. Mm -hmm. They might come down a little bit, but let's come up with a creative option to maybe get that rate down a little bit lower. Um, and once they hear that, then, then they usually are, are willing to go ahead and um, make that, make that move and, and start looking for real. So I, I do think that even if the rates stay, flat um mm -hmm. it's going to start getting busy the next few months like busier i agree i agree to your point there's going to be a lot of movement with the spring market people getting ready to either list their home because they know that this summer they're going to be moving or potentially just making the move now getting ready for uh an early summer move so there's an absolute driver going into the spring that's going to either show listings or more people that are interested to buy yeah. And with rates staying flat, if my projections are accurate, then we are going to see that more and more people are going to reconcile to the fact that, hey, these are the rates I want to buy. I want to move. I want to sell. I want to list, whatever the case might be. We're going to see a lot more activity. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so you mentioned that in your CRM, you're able to see that there are people that are continuing to visit, look at properties, ask questions, things like that. I'm seeing very much the same thing on the mortgage side. When I have somebody that's applied for a loan with us that's pre-approved, was that they were taking longer with the pre-approval to actually either start looking or to start making offers. But now I'm having a lot more activity from my pre-approved buyers, scheduling more showings, making more offers. And there's definitely a lot of activity. So I'm looking forward to what is going to come in the next 30 to 60 days. And it's exciting to hear that you have the same outlook on the real estate side. That's okay. a positive thing for Space Coast real estate that we can see going into the summer months. Yeah. The key here, I think the next you know few months and few years are going to be the people that are used to nurturing leads mm -hmm. um, and taking really good care of those leads um, are going to do well. 
because um, again, the days of somebody uh, clicking on Zillow or whatever, or keep calling you and saying, I want to buy a place. And then they end up buying a place that week and then regret it, <laughs> which is what yeah. was happening for a few years. Yeah. Um, the, we have, you know, really educated buyers and sellers out there right now. They're taking their time. Um, uh, later today, I'm going to meet a, a buyer that you and I are working with, and we've been working with him since August. I looked at the first time he came into one of my listings, and um, <clears throat> that's just how it's been. There's been months where he hasn't talked to either of us, right. and but that doesn't mean we haven't stopped talking to him and communicating right. with him. And um, you know, now here we are in March, and he's you know raring to go. And in fact, he sent me like two properties he might buy. Um, so that's, that's just awesome. how it goes. But if, if either one of us said, oh, he's not talking to us anymore, he's probably not going to, you know, buy or whatever, you know, yeah, we would have lost him to somebody else that was more eager and, sure. and more ambitious. And we're not going to let that happen. Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. No, you're right. You're right. And I think I, I've personally seen multiple instances um, earlier this year. As a matter of fact, I had a closing. I started talking to these people two years ago and I stayed in touch with them and we closed. So it's all about making sure that you're following up, nurturing and showing them that they mean more to you than just the quick sale, because right. these are going to be clients that are going to potentially buy multiple homes. And when we take good care of them and show them that we're humans and we're there to make sure that they're getting the very best that they can get, they are going to be, I call it sticky. They're going to come back to us more often because they, they like us. They know us. They trust us. That's kind of a cliche thing to say, but it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the reason why all the coaches say, no, you like, you trust you. you know, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it, it is true. Yeah. 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 I, it is like, I, I can't stand some of those things, but that one I, I completely relate to because it's true. Yeah. Like, you know, even in our business, like, you you and I work with people that we want to work with. You don't work with every mortgage lender because you may not get along with every mortgage lender. Or you may not right. want to work with every mortgage lender. Same on the real estate side. I don't work with every real estate agent because I don't get along and work with every real estate agent. So our buyers, whether they're buying real estate from you or they're getting a mortgage from me, feel the same exact way about us. They're not going to have the same flavor as everybody else. But if you're doing a good job and you're staying in touch and you do form a relationship with them, they're more likely to come back and talk with you. If yeah. you go off into the sunset, then obviously they're going to find somebody that's more interested in working with them. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'd like that's to take a second and, but you know, I'm sure you got some other questions, but I just want to say congratulations on your new venture, Shorepoint Mortgage. What, um, what led to that and uh, you know, what brought you here? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Good question. I like how you turn the tables on me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, short point mortgage. I'll give you the short version, Peter. So I know we've talked about it a little bit. Um, I have always wanted to go back to my roots. My roots were a direct uh, brokerage versus a uh, retail mortgage lender. So mm -hmm. I love the option of being able to look at literally thousands of different loan programs from hundreds of different mortgage investors for all of the clients that I work with to find them the very best rates, the very best programs and some of those niche programs that aren't available at, you know, lender A, lender B or lender C, or even some of the bigger banks. So it's been a little bit of a work in progress. When I got back into the mortgage business, I worked for retail mortgage companies, which are, you know, their rules, their guidelines. If you don't fit in that box, it's maybe not a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently transitioned from, Another company that was amazing that I really enjoyed working with that I miss a lot, but it wasn't 100% where I felt like I needed to be with my business. So uh, I made the decision officially about a month ago to, to venture out and to start Shore Point Mortgage, uh, which is a brokerage business. Uh, we are full mortgage brokers, and it's it's been a great experience. I've had a lot of positive feedback from um, past clients, uh, current clients, yeah. from uh, my partners in, in the real estate sure. industry. Um, so yeah, it's been good. Thank you. I remember. I remember we were we were about a month ago. We were sitting in church at in the pew, and yeah. you turned to me and said, uh, "You told me about Shorepoint Mortgage." And I was very excited to hear that. Yes. Uh, and 
you know, we prayed on it and it was all good. Yeah. 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 I always share good news with you when we're sitting together at church. That's right. that seems to be the best place to deliver those sort of things. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you guys you guys don't know but peter and i are very very religious we, we are yeah. yeah we're former altar boys um so peter i do have a couple more questions for you um, Shoot. I'm, I'm here for you buddy all right i told you before the interview started i moved mountains to be here today so you got me you got me and, and de novo <laughs> i appreciate that um so what i want to know is when you're looking at trying to gain, what's the word I'm looking for? When, when you're, when you and your business, cause I know that you do things head over tail better than some other agents in this market for sure. When you are looking to go out and to find new buyers or, or new sellers, do you employ multiple avenues or do you put all of your eggs in one basket? I think I know the answer to that, but I want to unpack that a little bit because I want to relate it to some things that help in the mortgage side too. Sure. It's definitely multiple. It's, it's, um, um, I've talked about this a lot and, um, whether it's, you know, marketing to certain past clients or engaging with sphere, uh, or going, um, uh, maybe having, um, like a coffee clutch or a lunch with what I like to call a connector, um, a past client or a referral partner that um, will, um, you know, will help point me in the right direction of some new business usually. Um, yeah. And then or open houses, uh, which, you know, a lot of agents don't like doing, but they are at the, <laughs> a guaranteed way to meet new people. And yeah, there are times when we do them and they aren't, you know, there isn't a lot of turnout or you do them and, you know, the people that come are already working with a realtor, but more often than not, you're going to meet some new people and it's worth um, worth giving a few hours of your weekend to do that. So that's definitely another uh, one of the options I, I, I go, go to. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's kind of what I wanted to parlay into the mortgage side of things, too, is the open houses. Um, I have found that even though some of them are home runs, grand slams, and some of them are, you know, fly out the first. <laughs> baseball analogies for you guys. Um, it, it helps to drive your business in the right place. And it helps the listing, uh, the, the seller, the person selling the house who, who has the listing, it helps them get a lot more eyes on the property. Because even though there may not be as many footsteps through on a particular Saturday or Sunday, we are able to go ahead and put that out to our spheres of influence, whether it's on social media whether it's flyers, whether it's just other agents that do come in and see it. So there's a lot of things that can be done in this market that don't require a ton of energy other than your investment of time that will help you sell a home, buy a home, get a loan for a home. And I've worked with you on so many different open houses. You know that I really enjoy getting involved in helping. And I've got a few buyers that have yeah. purchased from yeah. those as well. So... And there's at least at least five five more that I can think of just off the top of my head that I'm, I still see, you know, searching and, you know, who knows, they could turn into clients too. Exactly. So if you're somebody that's looking to buy a home, sell a home, consider doing that on the weekend. Partner with, you know, Peter. Go look at some of these houses. If you are going to list your home with Peter, make sure that you guys have a conversation about Peter's plan to have open houses because – they work. They, they get people's eyes on your property. And it may not be today, but maybe it'll be next week. Maybe they'll show an interest in two weeks, you know, if it hasn't sold by then. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there's there's a lot of advantages to doing some of these out of the box things. And that's why I, I mentioned that I wanted to kind of unpack that a little bit. There's not any one way to sell a house or to buy a house. You have to look at multiple avenues and work with local people in terms of financing, because you're going to get bad advice from the big banks. You're going to get bad advice from the call center. I call them headset jockeys because that's what they are. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're going to get bad advice from them. You want to work with somebody locally that you can touch, that you can talk to, that you can meet face to face. Sure. So, yeah. and, and Somebody that knows, knows the appraisers or at least exactly. knows it's going to be a local appraiser. 
Exactly. Not somebody, you know, from a few hours away that has no idea what the Brevard County market's like. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Peter, I appreciate your time today. We've been 25 minutes. I want to be respectful of your time. This, so. this has been 25 minutes. It felt like 10 seconds. It did. And time flies when you are having fun and you always have fun when you're with Nate Joma from Shore Point Mortgage. You're the best. Thanks. Checks in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Peter. Again, I, I really appreciate you making the time this afternoon. I know you're a busy guy with a lot going on and um, it's been good talking to you. So if anybody wants to reach out to you to ask some questions about listing their home or buying a home, what's the easiest or the best way for them to get in touch? Uh, you can call or text me 321-294-7070. You can check out my website, peterjpappas.com, or you can email me at peter at DeNovo Realty. There you go. That's Peter it. J. Pappas, the number one real estate agent in Brevard County, according to his parents. Yep. All right, everybody. I appreciate you guys tuning in to another episode of the Space Coast Real Estate Spotlight. And we will be back with another episode very soon. Thanks again, Peter. Got it, buddy.